I'm Tom Barnes, Extension Professor and State Extension Wildlife Specialist in the Department of Forestry at the University of Kentucky. And I am one of the authors and the photographer of the Rare Wildflowers of Kentucky. One of the reasons that Deb and Mark and I did the Rare Wildflowers of Kentucky was that it was kind of a, a sequel to uh, Kentucky's Last Great Places in that the book is about conservation of natural resources. And being a wildlife biologist, I thought, oh, it'd be really great if I could do one on wildlife. But that's challenging because rare wildlife, it, it's hard to photograph common wildlife. Photographing rare wildlife would be extremely difficult. And so I thought, why not use plants to send the same message that you would send with, with rare wildflowers? And so since I'm kind of a generally trained ecologist and working with Deb, who's a very good competent botanist, and Mark, who is a, a, an ecologist that works for the state and has traveled all over the state and has seen a lot of these plants, it seemed like a natural fit to work together to document the rare plants of Kentucky. And when I originally started the project, I thought it would be really easy because the state maintains a database of all of these plants. And I gained an immense amount of respect for what Deb does because even with a list, there are a lot of times we'd get there, the plants wouldn't be there, the habitat had changed. A lot of these plants only occur in one location. You'd miss the flowering time. and you know, one day when Deb and I were out looking for Blue Ridge catchfly, we visited a site where, where she had seen them. In the Daniel Boone, there were 12 plants. Uh, we eventually found those. We only found three plants of the 12. The others were gone. Uh, they weren't in flower yet. So we checked two other sites, and those two other sites had been logged, and the plants were gone forever. So that was, you know, not a very good day. And it got worse because we drove over the hill and saw 30 acres of it in invasive exotic plant called purple loosestrife that, you know, invasives are a real threat to the environment. So it was kind of a depressing day. Of course, I, I went back then two weeks later, and fortunately those three plants were in flower, and I was able to get a, an image for the book. So it was a tremendous challenge getting the images for the book. We looked at the dog violet, which is one of the blue violets before. This is another one of them. This is marsh blue violet. It obviously, sound of water, grows near water, marsh. But you notice how this one has really long stems that the flowers occur on. It's deeper blue. Look at how different the leaves are. And most people learn their plants by what I call gestalt. You see it enough, you recognize that as marsh blue. You see the dog violet enough, because you recognize this is not the common blue violet you see in the lawn, which is native, which is probably the most common violet. But uh, again, when you look at this enough and you see the long stems on the leaves, shape of the leaves, the long stems on the blue flowers, and the environment that it's growing in, you, you cross off a lot of things pretty quickly. And we're in a real rich environment. There's some, this is another little violet. This is sweet white violet. And you can see it's a little bitty guy, and again, it grows in music. And you can see, in this case, it's got round leaves, little round leaves. Um, and then up on the hill, there's uh, some of the native chickweed, which is right here, and some little Quaker ladies. And then all of this is actually a medicinal plant called uh, shrub yellow root, and it's very common along the sandy streams in eastern Kentucky. Global warming changes everything, absolutely, no question. It's already having an impact. I mean, when I worked on the Wildflowers and Ferns of Kentucky, which was my third book, I found things flowering two weeks early. And I used Mary Wharton's 1970 book as a guide, and, and I quickly found out, man, I better ditch that because things were flowering much earlier and I was going to miss them. So, um, yeah, it's, a, it's pretty amazing. And that's another, another reason to use native plants because 
Yeah, they can they can take it, you know. Plus, they're really cool. And even with wildflowers, I mean, you're looking at a Cornell study that saw six of 15 common wildflowers flowering 20 days early. Stanford had a study that showed 20% of all vascular plants will become extinct. You know, it, even in Kentucky, you know, these beautiful forests you see, you know, that's not the predicted type of habitat. We're going to have more pine oak savanna that you see in the south. It's going to be a big change for people. One of the ways that I accomplished some of the photography in the book was to grow some of these rare plants in my garden. And I think that's one thing that Kentuckians can do. Invasives now, invasive exotic plants, by and large now, largely come from the horticulture industry. Uh, it's been estimated that 80% of the worst invasive species are, are horticultural introductions. And Kentuckians can buy a good many of them even today, and there's some on the horizon like Kogan grass that, that are absolutely horrible. And so, you know, as a homeowner, if you want to plant native things, you know, we have a number of good native plant nurseries where you can buy native plants. They're not any more difficult to grow than horticultural things. They may not have gigantic showy blooms, but if you plant them in drifts and clusters, they're every bit as lovely. The publisher approached me about doing a book on the waterfalls of Kentucky. So I've probably gotten about 40 or 50 of them so far. That's why we're here today. We were shooting this little thing. That's not really what I call a waterfall, but it does have a name, and I'm only dealing with named waterfalls on public lands. And it's called Creation Falls. Um, and so I was out doing that. Uh, I also have a project that's near completion, which is called Finding and Photographing Kentucky Flowers, Wildflowers. And that book is out for review right now. And, and this particular trail is mentioned because it does have uh, some pretty good flowers in the spring. Um, and of course, it's got the waterfall and the arch, natural bridge, which makes it somewhat of an interesting walk. But in fact, the best trail for wildflowers in the Red River Gorge isn't a trail at all. It's actually a road, Forest Service Knock, Indian Creek Road, which runs for about 12 miles. It's a gravel road. It, it's got everything. And you know, for a photographer, it's great. You don't have to walk, you park. and in fact, yes, uh, last week I, I'm working on a project with KET on the wildflowers of Kentucky and we stopped and photographed two yellow lady slipper orchids in the road ditch. When I photographed the rare wildflowers of Kentucky, I used film. It was the last film-based project that I did. And I used Nikon equipment because it's what I had, it's what I was used to, and I don't have the kind of resources available to me personally to go out and spend a $20,000, $30,000 on new equipment. So I, I have now switched to digital, and I shoot Nikon digital, um, and I shoot a D200 camera, which is not a professional camera, but it's kind of high-end amateur. It does what I need it to do. Uh, it's a very durable camera. Uh, I actually have two bodies. My primary wildflower lens is, is Nikon's 200 macro. It's very sharp. I like it because it gives me extra working distance. I used to carry a pack that weighed over 40 pounds. I, I carry, a, of course, a tripod is the critical element, and I carry a very big sturdy one, although this is carbon fiber, so it reduces the weight. But uh, I carry this big one because I needed something to hold my 500 in addition to the 200 macro. So, you know, this may be a bit of overkill, but this was always carried in my pack today. Typically when I go out, I carry one body, one flash, the 200 macro, a super wide angle and a, a wide angle normal and a polarizing filter and that's pretty much it.